Okay, so we're going to talk today about breaking down the cuttlefish and doing some improvisational carving to make some more complex design elements than the impressed star. Uh, so the first thing we got to do is we've got to take our wood block and make sure that our cuttlefish is supported on our wood block because we're going to cut it in half with a very big hacksaw. Okay. And the hacksaw is good because it'll cut through this soft part of the cuttlefish bone very quickly. You can see that I can carve it with my fingernail, but this keratin shell takes a little bit more uh, of an aggressive cut. And so you can do this with your jeweler saw. I recommend a spiral saw, but in all honesty, if you're trying to get a relatively straight cut, the hacksaw does a wonderful job. So, just set our piece up and we're aiming for the middle. So we're through the, the powder part already, and now you can hear we're fighting with that, that character. You wanna go nice and slow if you can. And I do this in an open tray because the cuttlefish dust gets everywhere, and it's not a problem unless you're allergic or you just don't like the smell of dried out seafood. So you just want to take your time and hold your material firmly and then finish up your cut. And you'll find you'll get this section here, this little broken lip, and that'll be a little tricky. You may have to file or sand that down to get it square if you're doing a two-part mold or a three-part mold. This is a pretty good section, so I'll sand it flat to do something like a three-part mold, and we'll break it down into parts like that. So I'm going to clean this up and change views. Okay, so now we have two parts and you can tell from the contouring that we're going to have to do a little bit of sanding. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to use our sandpaper, right? This is 180 grit, it's waterproof, which means you can get it wet. I don't recommend it because wet cuttlefish smell terrible. So you're just gonna make large circles, figure eight, whatever makes you happy. The goal here is to get it so that the groove at the top and the groove at the bottom are gone and you have something flat and relatively thick to work with. That's pretty good. Now we gotta do the same thing on the other end. And one thing to notice is we have a deeper groove contour here, as well as a secondary groove contour here. So it's gonna be a little trickier to get this one completely flat. fairly close and if you look in the center we have some sort of divot okay indicating that there's a piece of debris on our sandpaper so you want to clean that off and you never blow with the cuttlefish what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you take your sandpaper to the trash and you can either tap the back of the sandpaper or you can dust it off with a brush, but blowing it's just gonna aerosolize it and you're gonna end up breathing a bunch of cuttlefish stuff. And that usually makes you sneeze, kinda of like chalk. Okay, a little more. And there we go nice and flat. So we have this extra piece of material here that we could salvage if we wanted to. Sand it flush to get access to that. But what you want to make sure is that both part A and part B can mate flush. Okay. So what I will always do is I'll just sand them together so that you get two nice flat So, 
Once you have your two parts flush, you're ready to carve, unless you're doing a three part mold. We're gonna start with a three part mold. And what you need to consider is how to get this top interface where these two planes made up to be perfectly flat. So what works best is to take the time. This is really exhausting. You take a firm grip, you hold them together. And then the hard part is sanding down this little keratin nub. So I'm going to switch to time lapse for that. Okay, so at this point, we've sanded our cuttlefish so it's perpendicular. So we could then have a third component just come on to the top and made up with our part A and part B, okay? So we're gonna start labeling sides, part A, part B, part C, just so we don't get lost as to what we're doing. So we'll call this piece right here, part A, and this piece here, part B, and we'll go through a made up on that before we make part C. Okay. 